Have you ever been ripping around on another server and anytime you caused any damage to another player, you were combat blocked, or if you caused damage to a building, you were raid blocked and don't really understand how that all works. I'm gonna show you what plugin is doing that, what it's called, how to install it and how to work it. Stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you all of the insider tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. If you find these videos helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me after you've finished watching the video and realized how much information there is in it for you. If you want to see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells. All right, let's get right into this. So the plugin that we're talking about today is in the community, it's very commonly referred to as raid block. Well, that's not actually what it's called. So if you're searching on UMod for raid block, you're not going to find it. The plugin is actually called no escape. So let's hop into the test server and I'll show you how this all works. So like I said before, the plugin is actually called no escape. This is the plugin here that you're seeing on the screen right now. I'm going to put a link to it down in the video description down below so you can access it super easy. I'm going to go ahead and install this plugin on our test server. If you've never seen how to install a plugin, I'll put a card in the top right hand corner right now that is that will take you to a video showing you how to install a plugin and what to expect while you're doing that. So once you've installed the plugin, this is exactly what your default configuration file is going to look like. And we're going to go through this step by step. I don't want to overwhelm everyone with the amount of information that's required to understand on this plugin, but I'm going to try and hit most of the key points so that you have a firm understanding of how this plugin works. So this configuration file is basically broken up into two parts. There's the combat block section, as well as the raid block section. The top section is combat blocking. So we're going to go through that first, obviously. So the part that I have highlighted there right now is essentially the different types of activities that you can do in order to become combat blocked. If you shoot somebody with a gun or shoot somebody with an arrow or hit them with a knife or hit them with a rock or whatever, these are all the different things. So like bullets is pretty clear. It's bullets, arrows is bow and arrow. Blunt would be like a rock or a torch, pretty well any melee weapon. And in here you, you can also be combat blocked if you hurt somebody with an explosion or a fire as in like a flamethrower, incendiary ammo, stuff like that. And they've got electric shock on there as well. So if somebody's trying to break into your code lock and they get electrocuted when they punch in the wrong code, it's gonna combat block them for that as well. You also have the duration. So how long that person is gonna be combat blocked for and then whether that feature is actually enabled. So in most cases you would want to change this to true. And so now when somebody is combat blocked, they're gonna be combat blocked for three minutes or 180 seconds. And there's also the notification. So if you don't wanna notify them that they've been combat blocked, you can change this to false and there'll be no visual indicators on the screen that they've been combat blocked. Other than if they try to do something that is prevented because of their combat block. The next section that I have highlighted there is what the player can do in order to become combat blocked. So you would enable this section if you wanted the attacker to be combat blocked as well as the victim. So the top section was dealing with the victim of damage. Now we're talking about the inflictor of the damage or the attacker in this case. So we change this to true and this will make it so that both the attacker as well as the victim are combat blocked whenever any of these parameters are met. You can change the amount of damage that needs to be inflicted on that person before your combat blocked. By default, it's set at one damage. The next section here is dealing with NPCs. Do you want your players to be combat blocked when they inflict damage to NPCs? If you do, you would wanna change this to true. And do you also want your players to be combat blocked when they get damaged from an NPC? So if they get shot at by a scientist, is it going to combat block them? Well, if we change this to true, then yes. Uh, we also need to enable this aspect of the plugin. So now we've enabled anytime a victim takes damage, they're going to be combat blocked. We've also made it so that the attacker, anytime they inflict any kind of damage to another player, they're going to be combat blocked. We've also made it so that if they inflict damage to an NPC, blocked. If they take damage from an NPC, blocked. And the next section down below that is how they're going to be unblocked. So if you want the combat block to automatically expire when that player dies, leave this at true. It comes default at true. Or you can make the combat block expire when they respawn or when they wake up. All three of these are kind of the same parameter. Uh, it's just determining when the combat block ends. So is it immediately when they die or is it when they respawn or is it when they wake up? So the next section down here is how you want the notification to appear. 
Uh, you can do a little bit of customization as far as what that looks like. Do you want the notification to be in chat, true or false? Are you using GUI announcements, which is another plugin, uh, which basically puts a, a bar at the top of the screen or wherever you determine you want that bar to be that says, hey, dummy, your combat blocked. And these are the parameters for that. This UI right here is, I'm sure you've all have seen it before at some point in time, but it puts the red icon just above your health meter and uh, telling you that your combat blocked. It also has a countdown timer on it telling you how long your combat blocks for. So the next section is the raid block section. So what utility of damage do you want to trigger the raid block to happen to that player? And that's what this section is right here. So bullets, blunts, stab, slash, explosion, or heat are all default triggers that will activate raid block. Right below that is death types. So if you are killed by bullet, blunt, stab, slash, explosion, or heat, it will also raid block you. So if you are breaking into a base and you get hit by an auto turret or you get hit by a flame turret or a shotgun trap or you know whatever these different types of things that can kill you inside somebody else's base if you're killed by them it will raid block you this next option is distance so how far away from the initial point of attack it basically creates a circle around that point of attack so uh, by default it's set at 100 and so anybody that's inside that radius of 100 of that point of contact or that point of attack is going to be raid blocked, even if it wasn't them that actually caused the damage to the base. If you're within that vicinity, you're going to get raid blocked. You can add some exclusions to this list. So let's say, let's say you're causing damage to a ladder on somebody's base. Um, so by default, they've got the ladder, the wooden ladder in there. So if you're damaging somebody's wooden ladder, it's not actually going to raid block you. But if you cause any damage to the actual base itself, then you're going to get raid blocked. You can also exclude different weapons so that they're not included in that. Uh, so like if you walk up to a base and hit it with a torch, by default, it's not going to raid block you. But if we were to take this out of there and not have any excluded weapons, then it would make it so that if you hit somebody's base with a torch, you're gonna get raid blocked. So you can put various different things in here. For the most part, this is how most people wanna have it, but you can add other things in there. So let's say you wanted to add the rock. If you tried to cause damage with a rock, uh, by default, it would raid block you. But if we put rock in the exclude weapons section, it'll make it so that causing damage to a base using a rock will not raid block you. This next section is the included prefab. So these are the, these are the different parts of the building that you can cause damage to that will trigger a raid block. So if you take down a door, window bars, a ladder hatch, a floor frame, a wall frame, etc., etc., it's going to raid block you. And you can add items to this list. You can pull items off of this list. Let's say you wanted to add uh, all three levels of the workbench. You can put those in there. So that way, if somebody causes damage to anybody's workbench inside of their base, it's going to trigger the raid block. Now, typically, because they're already inside the base, to cause the damage to the workbench, they're already raid blocked anyways, but this will increase the likelihood of that timer being reset. Do we want to notify them? Yes or no? So that's pretty much the basics of raid block. There's a lot more that you can dive into for some more details, but I do know I have tested this. If you run this plugin just at the default settings that come in the config file, this plugin will work for you in most cases. Of course, everyone is going to need some fine tuning and there are some details in this config file that you can go through that will give you a little bit more control over a couple of different things. It's not necessary for me to go over this on a basic tutorial of the plugin. However, if you want me to dive into those details, I can certainly do that. Leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to do that. So the last section that we need to cover on this config file is what is actually prevented from happening, whether you're combat blocked or raid blocked. And that's what this section is down here. It's at the very end of the config file. So if you get combat blocked or raid blocked, this list of activities are the things that you're going to be prevented from being able to do. So for example, you can't do slash remove, you can't teleport, you can't use the bank, you can't trade, you can't recycle. This is the list of things that you're actually preventing people from doing if they get raid blocked or combat blocked. And you can add items to this list, you can remove items from this list. It all depends on how you want this plugin to perform on your server. Okay, so a very important detail about this plugin. If we were to just throw this plugin into our server and just let it generate the config file, which is fine, 
And then we hopped in the game and we're like, what the heck? Why isn't anything raid blocking or combat blocking? Well, I'm gonna explain to you why most people have a problem with this plugin. It's a pretty small detail, but it's pretty easy to overlook it. So let's hop in game and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna go around real quick and find an NPC. As you'll remember when we were going through the config file, I made it so that any damage to an NPC or from an NPC is gonna trigger combat block. So I'm gonna go find an NPC so that we can test this. Okay, so we're gonna inflict some damage to this NPC and we're gonna see what happens. So if I do slash home while I'm combat blocked and raid blocked, is it going to allow me to do it? Yes, it is teleporting you to your home in 15 seconds. So let me just cancel that real quick and I'll explain why. And this goes for everything that we had on our list of things that we were preventing our players from doing while they're combat blocked or raid blocked. So I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna use our handy dandy little permissions manager. And by that we do slash perms group default. So this is gonna bring up the permissions that we have assigned to our group called default. If you wanna learn more about that, I'm gonna put a link to another video in the top right hand corner right now, which will take you to how to deal with permissions. So let's go into the permissions section for no escape. So as you can see here, all of the different permissions associated with this plugin are all revoked. So we need to decide which permission, and this is kind of backwards in that we need to grant the permission in order to prevent them from being able to do it. So it, it gets a little bit confusing. So we'll just start at the top and work our way down. If we're raid blocked, do we want to prevent them from doing slash remove? Yes. If they're combat blocked slash remove? Yes. Uh, if they're raid blocked, do you want to block them from TPing? Yes. Combat block TPing and so on and so forth. You can continue on down the list. Only some of these things are going to apply to you. Like this next section is banking. Um, if you don't have any kind of a banking plugin on your server, then obviously that section does not apply to you. Uh, trade, do you want to prevent your players from being able to trade while they're combat blocked or, or raid blocked? Let's grant both of these and it will prevent both of those things. Uh, this next, this section down here, do we want to prevent them from being able to use B grade while they're combat blocked or raid blocked? If we do want to prevent that, we need to grant those two permissions. Do we want to prevent them from being able to build while they're raid blocked? We would do that. If they're combat blocked, we would do that. You can see what I'm getting at. I'm, I've already gone over way more of these permissions than I thought I should have for this video, but you get the idea. Okay, so now that we have the correct permissions assigned, if we do the damage to this NPC, so now we're combat blocked for three minutes again, but let's say that we try to TP home now. So let's go slash home one, and it says you may not do that while in combat block for 2.88 minutes. So now the plugin is actually doing something that we want it to do. It's not just putting up a warning on the screen. It's actually preventing the player from doing something. In this case, it was using slash home. And because of the way we set up the permissions, this player also isn't able to teleport to another player. They're also not able to trade or recycle or whatever. It gives you a lot of control over the things that you can prevent the player from doing once they've been combat blocked or raid blocked. Okay, so I feel like I've said the words combat block and raid block a thousand times, way too many times for this video. I hope this video gives you a basic understanding of how this plugin works and how to make it work for your server. Of course, like I said before, there's a ton of different things that you can do that's gonna make it work exactly how you want it to work. And if there's a detail that I've missed, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below and I can go back and go over that detail. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. If you haven't already done so, make sure you join the Discord that I have running for this YouTube series. There's getting to be a lot of people in there that love to help out. We've had so many people join that, that just want to help other, other admins or other server owners with their plugins and questions and comments and concerns. It's actually something that I never thought would happen. I thought I'd be answering all the questions, but I'm not. It's quite amazing, actually. Of course, I am there to answer questions as well, but I do have to sleep and I do have to work. So I'm not available 24 hours a day, but it seems like there's somebody available 24 hours a day. Somebody is always there to help with your questions. So make sure you join the Discord. Again, the link is in the video description. That's pretty much a wrap for No Escape. If you found this video helpful in any way, like I said before, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me. If you want to watch some other videos from this series, be sure to click on one of the boxes on the right hand side of the screen. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put the big circle right down below this video right now. 
I'm always here to help. Let me know if there's anything more I can do for you. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.